Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-49. Last time on the Bard's podcast, the celebration of the Shorning Festival turned out to be a bit more than bargained for to the group. The next morning revealed that Karina had spent the night talking to the charming captain of the watch, and Fargus drank far too much, and may or may not have become engaged to Winnie the barmaid. Both headed for bed despite the hour, and Bulger said his farewells to the group as he sought out transportation back to Phoenix. We rejoin Lady Irena, Cabe Silvertongue, and Sister Elaine, who were at a tavern across from the church after exploring the town all morning long. And that is what I find amazing, stated Lady Irena. We are out here in the wilderness, and this community doesn't have any walls. That doesn't seem wise. The serving wench approached and delivered three plates of food to the trio. She paused for a moment and was noticed by the adventurers before speaking. My apologies for overhearing, but perhaps I can help you out with your quandary, said the woman. The group looked at each other and nodded for her to continue. Years ago, we had walls, stockade walls, but we banded together and moved to deal with the humanoid threat that was present. It took several years and our watch goes out daily to make sure that we don't have any trouble. As our town grew, it seemed easier to use the wood that made the fences to just use to make the houses. Cabe spoke up and inquired as to what the threats were and was told that it was primarily gnolls and hobgoblins, although other threats have been reported over the years. They were bolstered by the woman's appreciation for the watch and the work that they did. She continued to extol the virtues of the Watch, along with the bravery of Captain Edmund Tolley, their leader. The serving wench pointed out that it was he who had been dancing with their companion last night. The discussion continued for several minutes with the cleric, bard, and mage, all asking questions and receiving answers that satisfied them. The woman took her leave as business was getting busy with other customers. The threesome spoke about the reputation the Watch had and were duly impressed. As they finished up their meal, they noticed how the people of Colby wandered the streets with little regard to the dangers on the trail. Once finished, the trio headed off to examine the other end of town, and in doing so, ran into Horatio Mellon, the magistrate. He spotted the adventurers and moved quickly over to them with a big smile on his face. Ah, good, just who I was looking for, he proclaimed. The adventurers acknowledged him and asked him what they could do for him. Not a thing, actually, he gloated. As a matter of fact, I just wanted to let you know that the pilgrims that had been waylaid on the road have claimed their belongings. The three nodded to each other in appreciation for being told, but was stopped when the magistrate produced a small bag of coins. In gratitude, the pilgrims wanted you to have this for a job well done. He then handed the bag over to Sister Elaine. The threesome quibbled with Horatio, claiming that they needed no reward and insisted that it be returned to the travelers. The magistrate shook his head negatively and told them that the group had already left to further their prophesizing in another area. He then noticed another citizen and excused himself to go speak with them, shoving the bag back into the cleric's hand. Sister Elaine shook her head and pointed out that she didn't feel right taking the money. Cabe and Lady Irena agreed and pointed out that they should give it to charity. The cleric thought for a moment and agreed, stating that the priest would have a better idea of who would need it more. With everyone on board with that idea, they turned around and headed back to the shrine at the far end of town. Bulger arrived at the stables and spoke with a teamster at that location. Sure, we travel to Phoenix, said the middle-aged man, but didn't you and your associates come from south of here? Why would you be going there? The sailor gave a casual and vague explanation for the reasons which seemed to suit the teamster as he had remembered that the group had run into trouble in Phoenix. Not wanting to blow their cover, he explained he always wanted to visit the big city. 
The pair discussed travel arrangements and Bulger discovered that it would be two days before the next wagon train would leave to head back to Phoenix. The teamster again questioned Bulger about not continuing on with his friends. Y'all seem like peas in a pod. You're like a family. But I guess that's your business and not mine. Be here in two days sharp at dawn. Bulger thanked the man and headed back across town to the tavern. As the cleric, mage, and bard wandered down the dusty street of Colby's main drag, they came across Bulger, who was looking pensive and nearly ran into the trio while they were calling out his name. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. I was deep in thought. Where are you headed? Sister Elaine explained about the monetary reward, and Bulger agreed that it wasn't right to take their money, pointing out that the church would probably use it better than they would. The foursome reached the shrine just as a familiar voice yelled out to them. A haggard-looking Karina was still sporting a broad smile, but looked quite tired. The group got reacquainted and swapped stories of their day so far. The waif confirmed that she had only gotten a small amount of sleep and was still happy over the previous night's events. Lady Irena and Sister Elaine smiled at each other and asked the girl to give details. As Karina gushed about the handsome captain of the guards, Cabe and Bulger got tired of the girl talk and took the bag of coins into the church. Karina spoke rapidly and moved from topic to topic about her regard for Edmund Eddie Tolly, pointing out that no man had ever made her feel so important. The comment made her blush and smile at the same time, causing the two women to chuckle. Sister Elaine took her hands and asked Karina if this was the first time she had been in love. Flushed with embarrassment, the wave shook her head rapidly and couldn't speak without gleeful noise. Finally, she admitted, Yes, yes, I am in love. He is such a wonderful man. He makes me smile. He makes me happy. He makes me... He makes me feel important. He's just so wonderful. As she spun around on her heels, causing Cabe and Bulger to shake their heads as they returned. The pair advised the ladies that the money had been delivered and the pastor would put it to good use. As the group stood outside of the shrine, watching a gleeful Karina dance around, the sound of charging hooves changed all of that. A group of horsemen wearing the colors of the watch stampeded up to the shrine and dragged a fallen member of their corps quickly into the building. The adventurers started towards the entrance, but were stopped by two men, each bleeding from a variety of wounds. The men held up their arms and advised the group to step back and no one was allowed to enter. Cabe inquired as to what happened when one of the men looked down at his feet. The other spoke in a low tone. It's our captain. He's hurt pretty bad. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.